How are you today? Well, I hope your answer is much like why well, I'm just a peach in summer. Look to the best. As I start this series of reflections, I'm looking at who I am and who I've been and who I hope to continue to be. I taught morality for close to 23 years for the Archdiocese of Detroit, high school morality to be specific, and looking back as a servant of the church and upholding uh, church teaching, looking back to the early 2000s, probably somewhere around 2002, 2003, in teaching morality to primarily junior high school students on the subject of the value of human life. I taught that the church believes that human life is sacred. Human life is sacred because it's created by God. From the moment of conception until natural death, human life has dignity because it is created by God with purpose and with plan. And in teaching on issues of sexuality, specifically for the purposes of this discussion today, on the issue of sexuality around the year 2002 to roughly 2004, I taught that the church believes that because human beings are created by God in God's own image, that they are deserving of respect. And a parent of a student that I taught, a couple of students that I taught, um, took great offense to the idea that I would teach that the church believes that homosexuality as an orientation in and of itself is not sinful. That a homosexual, and I was quoting Archbishop Polarczyk and still do, um, a homosexual is as much as a person of a homosexual orientation is as much a sign of God's love as anyone else, and that homosexuals should be treated with respect. And the parent was so offended by that, that gay couples, for example, should be treated with respect, that that in and of itself was not a violation of church teaching. It was actually a um, um, an adherence to church teaching, that they should be treated with respect and afforded the same courtesy that you would anyone. And the, and the argument on the parent was that that was such a detraction, that I was such a, um, a violator of church teaching that he took it all the way to the archbishop in his complaints. The, the uh, school advisory board was notified, of course, the principal was notified, and the archbishop was notified that there was a heretic among them, this person who was going against church teaching for daring uh, to suggest that homosexuals should be uh, treated with respect and have the same dignity as anyone else. Later in the same time frame, Pope Benedict released a statement that the, that, uh, the Conference of Bishops and, well, actually uh, globally around the world, that um, no longer would they be accepting candidates for the priesthood who were homosexual. And I found that outrageous and such a, such a violation of everything that I'd been led to believe was true and what we believed in the Catholic Church. And I gave an interview to the then uh, religious editor for the Detroit Free Press in an article that ran, I'm pretty sure if memory serves me, um, in the front page, you know, or the first section of the paper, saying that I had disagreed with the Pope, that in fact, he was not making, apparently he was not making the distinction between homosexual orientation and homosexual activity. It was also an affront uh, to all the current priests who happened to be homosexuals. It was a, a slap in their face to suggest that they couldn't keep their vow of celibacy. So I came under uh, a lot of fire for that. It was under a lot of reprimand and scrutiny for that, that I was a heretic. And then I find myself in 2020 in controversy, imbued in controversy, being accused of being intolerant, to say the least. And among the accusations, certainly uh, by, you know, 
people, and including uh, you know a handful of uh, former students, accused me of just the opposite of being homophobic. I taught the same thing in 2020 and 2019 and 2018 and 17 and 16 and going back for the last 23 years, I, I've taught the same thing, that this is what we believe. We believe that God created male and female to complement one another. We believe that the fullest expression of our, of our sexuality belongs um, in the context of marriage between a man and a woman, that that's the foundation of family, that that is what we believe, and if others believe differently or even disagree, God bless them. This is a free country, and you're allowed to do that. But this is what we believe. In no way does that suggest that people should be treated with any less respect, but by, ver by um, merely reiterating and emphasizing what the church believes on issues of homosexual, uh, so homosexuality and sexuality in general, um, I came under fire again. Only this time, it wasn't that I was a heretic. I was, in fact, a homophobe. I'm homophobic for presenting the church's teaching on issues of sexuality, especially as it applies to people of a homosexual orientation or now in the uh, expanded LBGTQ uh, community and their choices as well as uh, orientation. So the message hasn't changed, the messenger hasn't changed, and yet quite the difference in accusations. Am I a heretic going against church teaching or am I in fact a homophobe? Well, apparently the only thing that's changed is of course the culture, uh, the people culture that attempts to subjectify morality. And thanks be to God, I don't get my esteem, my value, and my worth from the opinion of culture. I didn't back then, and I don't now, and neither do you. We get it from being created by God in God's own image with purpose and plan, and with the encouragement to live accordingly for our own fulfillment. So that's my reflection for this sunny November day. Be the person that God is calling you to be. Be true to the person that God is calling you to be. Know that you are the masterpiece of his creation with purpose and with plan and seek first his will. Seek first his will, put him first, esteem him first, and all of these things will be added on to you. God bless. Have a fabulous day.